you happen to need somewhere to get the wiggles out and still participate, look for the family room just behind the modern sanctuary. Here you can let your little ones play and still see and hear the service on the big screen TV. Now we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, as our service will begin in just a few minutes. I think we're going to begin our service. Sorry, we're starting a little bit late today. Uh, we got done a little later in the traditional service, but we're glad that you're with us today. Let's all rise together as we, uh, we begin our service this morning. We're going to begin with a song that reminds us to come to the Lord just as we are. We come to Him with our brokenness, with our despair, and all that brokenness and despair, the great thing about it is that it doesn't end there. It begins there, but it ends with hope on an account of Jesus. So we begin our service. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides. 
needs my heart. Sing it out. Lord, I need Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. That's right. There's a line in the song that we're going to look at today. Uh, do you wish uh, that you could see all things new? Do you wish that you could see all things new? Where do we live our lives as if we don't wish that? Where do we live our lives that we're not agents of those who would make all things new in Jesus? That's our confession of sins today. And we open in the name of the God, God who connects us to himself forgives us, renews us, restores us, redeems us, empowers us every single day to make a difference. We open in his name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. Sing that again. Lord, I come, I confess, Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I
you're my one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. We're going to look at two places uh, in God's Word to us today. The first one's from Revelation, the fifth chapter. It says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, the right hand of the Father, right, a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. 
See the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He was able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, set it out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. And I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. Remember what amen means? Yes. And the elders fell down and worshiped. And from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there uh, to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. So such far, reading, you can be seated. We'll have the children come forward uh, for the children's message. You know, while we're doing this, our junior high and high school kids, we would excuse them. Uh, yeah, the, what they're doing now is they're, they're meeting together. Uh, they're, they're looking at the message. They're stopping it. They're talking about it. They're applying it to their lives. Awesome, powerful stuff. Uh, so they can be excused, and we'll have all the little ones up here, and you guys can sit down right in here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to sit with you. I'm going to sit right here, okay? Can I do that? So you, c- kind of turn around so you can see me. C- can, can you do that? All right. Very cool. Can you guys get up here? Let's see. Can you all? I think there's room. All right. So um, I got a real straight question. Uh, I'm not being funny. I'm, it's not a trick question. But what did Jesus do for us? Can anybody tell me? Die on the cross, all right? Die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, right? Brought us together with God. We have life with Him. We're dear sons and daughters. Did He stay dead, though? No. no. What happened? He rose again. He rose. Yeah, He rose again. So He's alive, and He ascended in heaven, and He rules everything for who? All of us. For us. High five. He rules everything for all of us. So I want to teach you a song that kind of talks about Him as the great King. It goes like this. Ready? King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. Can you sing that with me? King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. And then it repeats itself. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. Then it goes like this. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, alleluia. Ready? Here we go. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, alleluia. And then it repeats again. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory, alleluia. So we're going to sing the whole thing, and you guys can join us. King of Kings, ready? Ready? King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. Jesus, Prince of peace, glory, alleluia. Jesus, Prince of peace, glory, alleluia. Now, here's the deal. Do you guys know it now? Because it was supposed to really be sung faster. You know it? Good. So we're going to sing it faster. Ready? King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, 
Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia. Now we're going to one more thing. Let's see here. So I'm going to start with you guys and with you guys. You guys are going to come in with this group. When I point at you. Let's see who wins. And we'll see who wins. Yeah. All right, here we go. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Alleluia. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia. Jesus, Prince of Peace, glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. So, I want you to sing that in the car going home with your mom and dad today. Cool? You can praise Jesus. All right, we'll see you next time. We got kids, uh, church, um, discover. kids discover right out the front door. <laughs> Where I should have danced. I, um, you don't want me dancing. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. All right. Uh, one announce today, I want to talk about the Red Letter Challenge. We made just one announce because we think it's important. It's coming in the fall. Jesus said, he even told a story, man. He said, um, you know, the wise person, the one who's smart, he takes my words and he puts them into practice. It's like somebody who's going to build their life, not on quicksand, but on a rock, right? Um, and he says st stuff like that all the time. He says, uh, you're, you're going to be blessed if you take my words and put them into practice. Take my words and put them into practice. Take my words and put them into practice. How are you doing with that? Yeah, sometimes I don't do very well with it either. Part of the problem is that we try to do it alone. Uh, the very first Christians, 3,000 came to faith on the day of Pentecost. The first thing they did was they came together in small groups. They, they worshiped like this, large group worship. This is awesome stuff. But they came together in small groups, and they shared their lives with each other. And they looked at Jesus' words, and they talked about how they would put them into practice in their lives. Uh, and they, they uh, helped one another, they listened to each other, uh, they held one another accountable, so to speak. Um, after all, we're called the body of Christ, right? So we're Jesus to each other. So what we want to do in the fall, we want to look at Jesus' words. Red letter challenge, most Bibles, his words are in red, right? So we're going to take his words, we're going to get together in small groups, we're going to talk about them and apply them to our lives as God's people. We really would like to see every single one of you uh, in a small group uh, uh, because we think it's powerful because that's, you know, Jesus had a small group. Goodness sakes, he had the 12 and he had the three, right? So he had a small group. Uh, so as you leave today, you can grab one of these. Uh, and um, on the back, it just says, um, will you pray about it? I mean, that's pretty powerful stuff. Just pray for it because God promises that our prayers are powerful and effective. The, the prayer of every single Christian is powerful and effective. So pray about it. And then it just says here, um, hey, I, I, I want to be a part of it, right? I want to be a part of it. And by the way, if you click the little box and you decide, no, I can't do that, we really don't put you in jail, jail or something like that, right? We, <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, as God guides you, check that box and we'll see, and we'll see if you can't make it work. Uh, and the last one is, we need lots of groups, so we need lots of group leaders, lots of places uh, to get together. This is really, um, we're kind of rebirthing uh, this idea of our small groups uh, with COVID and everything, it's, it's kind of gone dormant. We're really excited about this. I, I know I am. I think uh, this is so powerful in our lives. Um, it's why we do home huddles, and we think about Jesus' words, and we put them into practice. Well, now we're going to do it in a little larger groups in the family of Christ. We're going we're to try to get uh, child care lined up, all those things. We're going to take away all the roadblocks so you can be part of this. All right? That's our one and only announcement, and so I could take a little time with it. Pretty cool, huh? Um, yeah, offering time. Um, there's a line in this song, and I always get this line wrong, but it's something like, uh, do you wish you could see all, uh, all of it made new? Do you wish that you could see all of it made new? Um, that's what we're about. Uh, I, this shirt here kind of says it all. This is what the kids are wearing. I'll talk about this in the message. But we're about, sh we're, we're about inspiring hope. And the hope is the certainty we have that Jesus Christ is at work right now making all things new. And it started with his death and resurrection. He continues like, like, uh, like a resurrection to make things brand new in our world. And we're a part of that. 
what our offerings does is that, is that we support that work and we're a part of that work. Uh, whether it's with us or an, 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 another Christian place, we would, we would really encourage you uh, because we're about renewing and restoring all the earth uh, and, and God uses us to do that. There's uh, three ways that uh, you can give here uh, online or, or um, you can text us or in person. You can drop it off or you can drop it off or you can mail it to us. Um, and, and may God's spirit guide you uh, in this. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This kind of empowers us to live these lives that bring hope uh, into the world. Will you pray with me? Uh, dearest Jesus, uh, we thank you. you. You brought us hope by laying down your life for us. You are... Um, you are the one who gave up everything for us. We pray that we, can, we might be empowered to live our lives in the same way, trusting that you will do great things through them. Pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, our soulful song of summer this week is called Is He Worthy? I'm going to teach you a song too, okay? Uh, Pastor is all about teaching the songs. So can I get the first slide? It goes like this. So I'll declare something. I'll ask a question. Do you feel the world is broken? And we sing... We do. Next slide. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. But do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. And here's how the song goes. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Continues like this. Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Blessing and honor and glory is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move? Does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole?
I, I love this uh, series, Soulful Songs of Summer, uh, God Has Given to His People, uh, these great songwriters, uh, these great poets, uh, and, and, and they put these words, these things of God to song, and it touches our hearts in a way that nothing else can. Uh, and, and this is one of those, it's, it's, uh, uh, may God bless you as, as we look a little deeper uh, in, into this song that he's given his people uh, through this wonderful artist. Uh, so Soulful Songs of Summer, today, uh, the theme we, we chose is, is the one, the, the one. Uh, I thought about this last night. I did a wedding uh, uh, re- uh, renewal, and I got home late last night. Uh, forgot to turn the porch light on. Do you ever do that? And so then I had all this stuff, because I went, for, so I had uh, my change of clothes and, and the Bible and uh, some stuff I had brought, and so I was like this, and I got about 10 keys on my keychain, and it's dark. You know, have you ever, guys, ever done that, right? So I'm trying to find the right one, and of course, it's the very last one I try, because it's dark. Uh, but there's only one key that's going to open that stinking lock, right? I could try all the rest of them, <laughs> and last night I did. And I, it's funny, because I, I thought about, <laughs> I thought about, that's what I'm talking about tomorrow, you know? That, that uh, there's only one, but he works, and his name is Jesus, and, and that's what we're going to look at today. The song begins like this. Uh, do you feel the world is broken? You want to answer that? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. I love this song. Uh, one of the reasons is that it asks for that response. Um, but as I, as I, when I first read through this uh, to, to, to preach today, it was a couple weeks ago, and um, I found myself just looking at words. Well, yeah, that's right. The world's broken. Yeah, the shadow. And then, and then I asked myself to flesh it out a little bit. And then it started to touch my heart. I, I asked a couple of people this last week about that. I, I said, do you feel the world is broken? I, I'm doing this song uh, for, to, to preach on. And they said, well, yeah. And I said, well, can you give me more? And I asked this one guy that works with kids. And when I asked him to give me more to flesh it out, I, I wish you could have all seen his face. It, it changed to great sorrow. And he says, I think about our children so many of whom have lost any sense of identity. And so many voices are making them confused. Uh, And the look on his face, uh, he hurt for him, you know. And then it was like a waterfall. He kept going. Uh, he said, and, and you know the violence, he says, did you know just down the street here, and I hadn't known it, I hadn't seen the news, but, but, but a, a guy had, had shot his girlfriend in the head in a restaurant that she was working at. Did you hear about that? I mean, that, that's local stuff. That's, that's not like a, 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 you know, a, a cotton it away. And, and he says to me, anguish on his face, what possesses somebody to shoot your girlfriend in the head? And the anguish on his face... Do you ever get that way? And he said, you know, if you want job security, you really should go into counseling. And I smiled at that because, because the average counselor, you know how long they last before they burn up? Two years. They take on the hurt and the pain and the brokenness of those around them. They last about two years. I asked a young woman the same question. Do you feel the world is broken? Well, yeah, I said, flesh it out for me. And, and the first, and she was kind of struggling, and, and she said, politics. And she said, I don't mean politics. I mean, I mean that, that we're just, everybody's supposed to hate each other. That, that we, we can't disagree, that we have to, and, and, and the anguish on her face. And then she said, Relationships. And, and I heard this again last night. A guy at work, he says, I, I have to be so careful because I'm going to get labeled. And, and it's not only them. We do the same. We label. We're not pointing our fingers. We do the same thing, right? That's the world we live in. I, uh, I, I went to Kaiser. I've, I've had Kaiser like 18 months and I, because of COVID. I never went and God blessed me with health, which was nice. And, and, uh, but I, my kids were bugging me, so I, I, had a, I went and I got a, 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 a physical and I got blood work done. And I'm, you know, it's like if you're ever been to Kaiser, it's, it's like an assembly line. You know, uh, and, and they're, it's like they're, 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 they're making widgets. Uh, 
And so I'm, I'm sitting in this, I, I get all my stuff together and I go into the window and then I got to sit some more and then I go to where they're going to take my blood and I sit down and she said, well, where's all your stuff? I said, well, I showed it. That, no, no, you got to give it to me too. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I'm pulling all my stuff out so she can see it. And she says, you know, and, and, and she's, she, she's a black gal. And, and she's saying to me, and she said, all of a sudden she looks at me as I'm fumbling away and I'm feeling bad because I'm holding up the line. You know, I'm holding up the line. And, and, uh, and, and she says to me, you know, Everybody tells us we're supposed to hate each other. And I looked at her and smiled and I said, yeah, but I don't think a lot of people want to do that. And she said, no. I know I don't. And we kind of smiled. Well, it's broken. How would you talk about that? Maybe something personal in your life or something you see going on around you. Or maybe the, like a runaway freight train that it really frightens you this side or the other, huh? You feel the world is broken, we do. Do you feel the shadows deepen on your heart, on your soul, on our world? We do. That's how this song starts. And it's meant to ask the question so that we apply it to our souls and our hearts. Where are you hurting? Where are you struggling? Where are the shadows deep? It goes on and says this. This is all creation groaning. So now... So now it encompasses everything. And by the way, this is taken from Romans, the book of Romans, where it says all of creation is groaning to be released, right, from, from, from its brokenness. See, all of humankind is struggling. They're groaning. It, I, um, one of the things that I find very interesting is what I call the human condition. You know, you can talk to a human being anywhere on the face of the earth and no one's going to tell you everything is fine. Every single one will tell you something's wrong. We may have different ideas how we fix it, but every single person knows things are broken, that things aren't right. Things aren't the way they should be. Everyone knows we got this hole in our heart. Everyone knows, but no one seems to know what to do about it. Huh? At the base of all that, we ask this question. This is not in the song. This is something that Kassan did, but can anyone help us? <laughs> I think we look so many places for the one. We look to ourselves, huh? I'll fix it. I'll do it. I'll fill myself up. I'll figure it out. How's that working for you? We look for other voices around us, other people to be our saviors. How's that working for you? We look for stuff to fill our lives, to pour ourselves into, to make us feel comfortable, complete, and whole. How's that working for you? We cry out, can anyone help us? Even as we're looking in all kinds of other places to all kinds of other things and people and even ourselves. And it doesn't work, does it? And so the song says this. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? You know the light is here? The light is Jesus. <laughs> It says in the Gospel of John, talking about Jesus, that he's the light of the world, right? There's a light no darkness can overcome. See, that's the message that God would bring to you and to us, to the whole world. That there is a light that overcomes every darkness, that darkness cannot overcome at all. You see, the, the story that God tells us is that we were made to be happy and whole and complete and unbroken only in relationship with him. And our first parents turned their back on that. They went the way of going it alone. They went the way of isolation. That's what sin does at its root. It isolates us from God. And ever you notice it isolates us from each other? We couldn't find our way back. We're not the one. We can't fix stuff. So Jesus came and connected us with God again. The forgiveness of our sins, this relationship, the way it was meant to be. Every time we tell the story, the Spirit of God touches our hearts, whispers to us that it's true. Maybe for the first time here or, or with you at home, or, or maybe, maybe you've been in a haze and you need to hear it again. Or maybe you know it, but just to hear it is to be strengthened as God's Spirit touches your heart again. This is the story of God for each of us. It's the story we've run away from, and the only thing that will make us whole again is to receive it and trust it and live in it. 
Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. It's true for your life and for mine. But the great thing about this song, and, and the thing that, that hit me right, right when I first read it, was this very next line, it doesn't stop here. So many of us, we stop right here, we're like, okay, I'm good, man. Like the Christian faith is simply about a get out of hell free card. It's not just getting out of hell free. It's about the life we live right now. It's about Jesus redeeming and restoring and making all things new. And so this song goes on, it says this, do you wish that you could see it all made new? Do you wish that, say, we do. Do you wish that it would make it, that you could see all things made new? That's what Jesus is doing. There's this great uh, uh, lesson in the, in the gospel, the, the, the one we read. And the context here is, is that John, is, John the Baptist, is in prison. He will not leave there alive. And by the way, this isn't like a, a country club prison. He's got chains on his arms and his legs. It's dank and it's dark. And you've got chains on your arms and your legs. It means the little buggers are going to bite you. You can't do anything about it, right? It is, he's in a horrible place. He won't leave there alive. Because a young, a young woman will ask for his head, uh, his head will be chopped off and given to her mother. It looks like darkness has won. It looks like the brokenness has overcome. John's sitting, and, sitting in the middle of defeat. And he sends his disciples, John's disciples, to Jesus. And he says, and they ask him the question for John, are you the one or do we look for another? Boy, that could be our question, huh? There's, there's so many that we look to that we think are the one and, and they, they don't fit. So now we come to Jesus and say, are you the one or do we look for another? And I love the answer Jesus gives. It's beyond here that I'm your light, John. I'm the light of the world. No, he doesn't say that. He points to the restoration and renewal of all things. This is what he answers. Go back and report what you see and hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. The good, is pre- the good news is preached to the poor. What is Jesus pointing to? His ongoing mission to redeem and restore all things. It began when he, when he was in Bethlehem and when he was baptized, right? And, and now he's, he was on his mission. He says, repent, the kingdom of God is right in front of you. What does the kingdom look like? I'm redeeming and restoring all things. I'm giving the blind sight. I'm making the lame to walk. I'm curing those who are in a hopeless place. Those who can't hear, I'm opening their ears. I'm raising the dead. Certainly this is all physical stuff, but it's, it's more than that, isn't it? Because sometimes it's harder to raise a dead soul than to raise a dead body. The good news is preached to the poor in spirit. Those who have nowhere to go, and they know it. Jesus doesn't point to him being the light of John's life. He was, and he is. But he points he points to the, res- to the restoration of all things. John, you want to see all things made new? You're going to see it. And it's starting right now. Do you wish that you could all see it? I'm sorry, that you could see it all made new? We do, and that's why Jesus came. You see that? Here we go. Book of Revelation, it begins this chapter 5. It begins, Then I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? What's going on here? You have to know the book of Revelation is, is a series of visions and, and they're parallel visions. And, and, and what they're a vision of is, in the, is what I call the New Testament era from the time between Jesus' first coming and his second coming. That's the time period. And each vision is parallel so that, so that you see the reality in which we're living, this New Testament, from, from one angle and then another angle and then another angle. That's what the book of Revelation is. It's not simply about when Jesus comes in all of his glory. It's about what's happening right now. I want to say that again. The book of Revelation, these parallel visions, are what is happening right now in the time in which we live, what God is doing in Jesus Christ to redeem and restore all things through us. That's what this is about. And what this is saying here, in the hand of the Father, who sits on the throne, the King of kings and Lord of lords, God of all, God of all things, right? He's got this book and it's sealed with seven seals. What does that mean? 
Well, seven is, is uh, the number of absolute completion. Uh, it's a number of, of God dealing with, with his world. Uh, um, why? Because God's the triune God, three, and you got the four corners of the earth, right? The four winds and so forth, three plus four. So, so with the seven seals, and I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Now, this isn't so we could just read it. What's understood here, he's saying, who, who can make this plan that God has to redeem and restore all of his creation, who can make this happen? Who is able to do it? That's what he's saying here. And the angel said, there's nobody to be found. And John says, I wept and wept because there was no one found who was worthy to open the scroll. You know, deep down, every single one of us, we know things should be different. Where do you end up in tears when you look for something or someone to make all things new and they disappoint you? Maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's someone who's close to you who can't possibly fill that role. Maybe it's a political figure. <laughs> maybe it's another power in our world. Maybe it's, maybe it's your bank account. Huh? can't be the one. It won't work. You'll be disappointed. John is weeping because he knows that, it, that there's nothing and no one that is there to open the seals and to bring about the, 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 the plan of God in our world and then he's in despair. But there is one. Then one of the elders, elder here is, is a symbol for for, for, for the people of God who proclaim the good news of Jesus. Uh, the one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, uh, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. The root of David, he came from, from the seed of David. He was, he was a, a king as David was a king, uh, has triumphed. He is able, read the rest of it with me, to open the scroll and its seven seals. That's one thing I want you to take home today. He's the one. We may look in all different kinds of places and we may look to ourselves or someone else but we'll only be disappointed. Jesus is the one. He is the only one. And he is for you. So why? What makes him the one? Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. So I, I love this. Um, obviously, it's picture language, right? Is there a dead lamb on the throat of God? I think about that with me, guys. No, there's not a dead lamb, right? He's saying something. He's communicating something to us. Jesus is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So I saw Jesus there with the Father on the throne looking as if he had been slain. Yes, because he had on the cross. But he was alive. And it says here, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures, the, the, the creatures of heaven and the, and the 24 elders, the, the creatures of God's people. He's the one. He's the one that's worthy. He's the one that could beat death. He's the one that rose again on Easter morning and every single day works to redeem and restore like a resurrection, every single one of us in the whole world. And this is going on right now. Would you read this with me? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? the lion of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave. He's the one. When you're in that place of despair, when you're, think, when you're thinking all is lost, that the brokenness is winning, that the darkness will be utter darkness, there's no darkness that can overcome the light. Jesus has come. But that's not the end of it. <laughs> I think this is so powerful. It's, it's what the writer of this song got. It, it goes on in the book of Revelation. He had seven horns. In other words, a horn is, is a symbol for power, and he has complete power. The number seven, seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So what's this talking about? 
Remember I said to you that, that uh, Revelation is, about, is a number of parallel visions about what's going, going on right now in our time? This is what's going on right now in our time. Jesus said, Jesus said, when I ascend to heaven, I will send you the Spirit. The Spirit will be poured out on God's people. That's what this is talking about. And, and now until the end of time, Jesus is moving and working through us, his people, to redeem and restore all things, to touch with a certain hope, the certainty of God, everything around us, those folks who are close to us and those who are far from us, in every way, to, 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 with, the, with the power of Jesus and his spirit to redeem and restore all things. You need to get this vision. It, the, 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 to walk with Jesus is not simply to say, okay, I'm safe. But it's to join him on his mission. And it begins in your homes with your husbands and wife and children and moms and dads. And it goes out from there. Holy Spirit sent out on all the earth. Happened at Pentecost on God's people. It's continuing. You know, we all search. We need to live for something bigger than ourselves. This is worth it. You have made them. It says uh, the Spirit of God has called people from every tribe and, and people and nation and language. And you have made them, and it's talking about us, right? You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Priests. That's who we are. So, so what does that mean? Well, the Old Testament priests, what do they do? They pray to God on behalf of the people. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. God says our prayers are powerful. They spoke the things of God to the people. Can we do that? That's what Jesus did, right? And they made sacrifices for the people. Can we sacrifice this? Can we make sacrifices? Can we do what it takes to touch people with love? To bring the kingdom into their lives? It's kind of what Jesus did, huh? He came and he said, repent, change your mind. The kingdom of God is right here. And he says, this is what the kingdom looks like as he healed people, as he proclaimed the good news. Right? As he pushed back evil. Can we do that? We can be a part of it. Because the Jesus, his work didn't end when he ascended into heaven. In fact, in the book of Acts, it says that that's just what he began. It says that's everything he began to do from the time he was born until he ascended into heaven. But he's continuing to do it through us. Do you wish to see everything made new? We can live in it. We can be part of it. The Spirit of God is poured out on us. So it's what we work at around here. It's, it's what drives us. And I, I wanted to share some of these things with you. Uh, Matt has, I, I tried to count all these young people and I couldn't over there in the corner. But he is, I, I think there's like 30 of them that's involved with what he's doing this summer. Uh, and they're landscaping, they're yard cleaning, they're moving, they're junk removal, nine stops in two weeks in the heat. And what are they doing? They're bringing hope into people's lives. They're inspiring hope that, you know what, God is here and he makes a difference. And every tomorrow is a tomorrow with God till finally Jesus comes in all of his glory. This is awesome stuff. And, and you know what, we can do this in our lives. We can inspire hope in people as we love them and, and, and touch them in his name with that love. Isn't that right? It's what we're practicing with our young people. But I dare not stop with them. Or even simply begin with them. It's a part of what we do, Right? And uh, go on, put, put the next one up there. So this is Everyone Matters Ministry. This is, uh, uh, I think we had a group of like 30 and Dave, and, and, and they were working. It's one of the places that, that we support that makes a difference in our world. If you haven't grabbed one of these, I would, Im- I would invite you to do it because it, it lists a couple of places that we're doing this type of thing. You see, this isn't just something we talk about. It's something we live out our lives in. We do it together. And as we do it together, it empowers us to do it in our individual lives. We were made to make a difference, to join Jesus on this ongoing mission. Yes, his is the light that can never be put out in our lives. But it's not so that we can just get out of here. It's so that we can make a difference here. song goes like this, do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? 
Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? And the power source behind all this, how we know this is true, is this last verse. Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those he loves? Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Jesus is coming. He will complete what he has begun to redeem and restore all things. But he's also at work right now. And we're part of it. Would you pray with me? Father, um, we want to see all things made new. Certainly, personally, in our lives in our hearts, in our souls that bear some emptiness and brokenness, but also with those who are close to us um, and in the brokenness of our world. We pray that your spirit, as you pour it out on us, Lord, that we might heed his call and his power in our lives to make a difference, to continue to join Jesus uh, as in this new creating that he's doing us in in this world. Open our eyes to see it and to live in it and to rejoice in it. We pray in your name and all God's people say, amen. So I was so uh, taken by this song and how it draws us into the narrative that, that uh, um, I asked Marco if we could sing it again. So I'd like you to stand as we sing this song again. And, and as you answer, take it into your heart. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? creation groaning it is is a new creation coming it is is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst is Is it good that we remind ourselves of this We sing together, is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave.
Amen. He's worthy. Amen. Our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, uh, and he said, uh, talk to God as your father, as your dear father. He, he's the perfect father. He listens to us. And so we come to him as, as our dear father. We, we pray, Lord, first of all, uh, for those who are sick and hurting. We know your compassion for them. You know your heart for them. We see it in Jesus. You weep as you did with Lazarus, uh, his sisters. You, um, you're there. So, Lord, we pray for those who are sick and hurting, especially remember Phil Rowe, who is, uh, who is battling cancer and, and now needs to be on dialysis. Uh, um, and there's so many questions there, Lord. We pray that you would be his peace uh, and that you would, according to your will, heal him. We also hold before you those who are in our hearts in this moment. We ask your, your presence in their lives, that your spirit would touch them, and then in your will you might heal them. Lord, we also, as our dear Father, as you, you see the horrors uh, of, that happen in our world, we remember all those who were touched uh, by the horrible uh, building coming down in Florida. Um, Lord, we pray that uh, for all of those who were hurt and for those families who lost loved ones, we pray that, um, that you might send your people, that they might know God is not silent here that they might know uh, our Father as one who weeps with us um, and, and who has and will make all things new. Lord, there's great mystery in these things, uh, but we pray that your people might so come alongside of those who are hurting and who have lost loved ones here that, that they might see you as the God who loves them uh, and who will make all things new for an eternity. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we also pray on this earth, we pray for um, every nation of the world, including ours. We ask that you would raise up leaders uh, that would reflect your heart towards their people uh, and that would look to build uh, peace in their nations and in their world. We pray, Lord, that, um, that, that you would give wisdom uh, and, and you would uh, bring us to a place, a common place uh, of right and wrong and good in our world. Um, Lord, we know a lot of things fight against us, but you are the king, and we pray that you would move powerfully and raise up leaders to help with this. Lord, in your mercy, uh, hear our prayer. Lord, you, um, you taught us to pray to our Father that, he, that his name might be holy. His name's always holy, but, but we pray that we might make it holy, that, that we might make him proud the way we live as being part of his family. And we pray that his kingdom come and his will be done. And, and Lord, we pray that, that, that we might be connected to that. And Lord, right now we, we, we hold up uh, this red letter challenge to you. We, this is a way we can grow in these things to, to hollow his name and, um, uh, and to make his kingdom come and his will be done as we more and more grow in that reality. We pray, Lord, that you might bring many of us, all of us, into uh, part make this red letter challenge ours. We, there's so many hurdles, Lord. We live such busy lives. We're uh, one more thing, and we pray that, that we might take away something if we need to, uh, to be able to be a part of a small group and to grow in this way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you... Um, you, you taught us to pray to ask for our daily bread, and we don't even think about it because we have so much. But we pray that you might empower us by your spirit to see the hand of the giver, the gracious heart of our God who provides all things, and then give us the heart of God and compassion for those who are struggling with stuff and, and that we might share with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, that grace of knowing that you smile on us, we pray that you would empower us to give this same grace to others. And we ask that you would keep uh, all evil and temptation from us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As God's people now, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Maybe may be seated just for a moment. Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Brian Hyde. Uh, he is a, uh, a counselor for the LCMS Foundation. Uh, we have talked about putting together an endowment fund here. If we're serious uh, about wanting to see all things made new, um, how can we do that with everything that God has given us, even, even beyond uh, when, when we're on this earth, when we're face-to-face with him? And, and the endowment fund is one of the answers to that question. And, and Brian, it kind of uh, just in God's providence, as we were putting this together in our congregation, he was made available to us. Uh, and so I'll let him introduce himself. To, there he is. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Pastor Brad mentioned earlier this morning about growing in faith and growing in giving. And I will tell you, without fail, growing in giving is all about growing in faith. God offers us lots of opportunities to show our families and the ministries that we love how much we do care for them. One of those ways is to make sure that our affairs in order. So what exactly does that mean? The Bible talks about us being prepared. Are you prepared if God calls you home today? I'm here to help each and every one of you to prepare for that. Through the foundation, um, I can visit with, with members. I would tell you, each and every single one of you in this room right now, that there's something that I can do for you. Uh, I know that for sure. Um, you probably don't know that yet but I would challenge you to let me, let me give you that opportunity to show you um, the things that need to be done as you prepare and give a blessing to your family. Um, preparing for uh, that time that God calls you home is a blessing for your family. And I would really encourage you to, um, to reach out, uh, call the office, talk to pastor, uh, and, and set a time aside uh, I'm going to be here each month for several days to be able to meet with anyone who would like to. And whether you're 18, 30, 50, 80, or, or over, um, you have a responsibility to those you love to do some kind of planning for both you and them. So my question to you now and my question will be then, where is God leading you? That's the basis of what I do when I work with folks is to find out where God is leading them. Help them put it into words and get it on the paper so that when that time that God does call them home, they are prepared. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've shared this with you before, but um, you know, I, when, I, we didn't have a lot of money when I, grew, when I was growing up, but when uh, my, uh, my mom died, my dad died first, but my mom died in her... Uh, in what she had put together, uh, she was able to give uh, $100,000 to to the churches, uh, to a couple of places in the churches. And it was such, and I remember sitting there with the lawyers, um, uh, and, with, <laughs> and it, it was such a witness to them. Uh, and, and that's kind of what Brian's talking about, but in a lot of, there's a lot of other things that have to do with it and so forth, but I just remember that, what a witness it was, and, and really a joy for my mom, I know, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, so this is real stuff. This is flesh and blood stuff. And Brian is called by God. Uh, you only bring, uh, number one, what you bring to something is, is who you are, your presence. And I can tell you, this man's heart uh, is just a wonderful, wonderful gift of God. Uh, and his presence will be a great blessing for us. Would you stand uh, for the blessing of our Lord? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, this undeserved love uh, that we know in Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, knowing God as our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit, knowing uh, the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit as we join Jesus on his mission, may, may this God be with you uh, every day this week, give you joy, uh, and lead you uh, as you go forward in his name. Amen.
God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. 